Hey guys, I am back finally with another book talk. I finished this book a week or so ago and I'm just now getting around book talking it because I finally had time to film an actual book talk. Anyways, the book we're all talking about is going to be The Magnolia League by Katie Crouch. Why I can never remember this author, I don't know. Anyways, this book, for those of you who have not read this, is about a girl named Alexandra Lee. And Alex's mother dies in a car crash. And she is sent to live with her grandmother in Savannah, Georgia. And her grandmother is one of those prim and proper ladies. And like, everything's gotta be perfect. And she's rich and no matter what. And to put this into perspective, like, you're just probably thinking, why wouldn't Alex stick in? I mean, she's probably normal. To be honest, Alex is a chubby girl with dreads and yeah. She smokes weed and she's from California, so woo, rep in California right there. Anyways, so she, after her mother's death, she goes to live with her grandmother in Savannah, Georgia. Turns out her grandmother is the head of this prestigious league for young debutantes, which, if you haven't guessed, is called the Magnolia League, aka the title of this book. And so basically, she wants Alex to become part of the Magnolia League. Alex doesn't want to do it because, hello, all these girls are like rich, prim and proper, itty bitty, dress really nice, awesome hair, and like, yeah, yeah, you know what I mean, the pretty girls that like we all envy, and yeah. So Alex doesn't want to be that, and then it turns out that there's some crazy magic things that happen within the league, because the leagues have the family called the Buzzards, and the Buzzards do the magic things for the Magnolia League in return for them to pay for the Buzzards, and yeah, all that jazz. So. Um, on top of that, Alex is unraveling secrets of the Magnolia League. Something else is behind her mother's death, and her mother kind of isn't dead, if that makes sense. I guess. Anyways, so, awesome read. Totally read it. One of my favorite books. I am actually, I just reread this. This is what it is, because I read it like two years ago. And so, this is it for the non-spoiler section of this video. So, if you have not read this, please... Don't watch this video. I hate when people spoil things. Why do you purposely want to spoil something for yourself? Go away. Just just go away. I don't want to see you ever again until you've read this video. All right, for those of you who have read this, this is actually one of my favorite books. I read it two years ago. I already said this. I read it two years ago, and I thought it was absolutely amazing, and I recently found out there was a sequel um, a couple months ago, and I bought it, and it's been sitting on my shelf, and I am actually currently reading it, so that will be my next book talk. will be the sequel to this book. Yes, it's gorgeous. I love this cover. Like, look at this this font. Like, it's gorgeous. I love it. It's like my favorite font in the entire world. Why am I talking so fast? I don't know. I think it's because, like, summer's coming up or it, because summer's just started. Look at it naked. It's blue. I love naked books. That sounds provocative. Did I use that word right? Did I use provocative right? I, I don't know. Whatever. Anyways, this book, I read it a second time. Um... I'm, I've realized I'm really not one for rereading books because then I basically know everything that happens. I mean, I did forget some things that happened, but like the main events I remembered and it was like, well, I already saw that coming. So it's like, mm, I like something new and fresh to like capture me and everything. Let's talk about this. Okay. So Alex runs into Hayes and Madison. Not sure when I was reading this. I'm not sure what I think of Hayes. Like she seems so nice and sweet and helpful in the book but like then again i think she's like i get this feeling like she's got alter ulterior motives to everything she's doing for alex and on top of that she just strikes me as one of those people who is like fake you know like she's so nice and perfect on the outside like and in public but when she's home and like you're alone with her she's like completely a different person she's like this nasty little troll type chick that's 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 just what I think and then Madison I don't know what it is I freaking love Madison I think she is one of my favorite characters in this book series and it's just because she's so funny and she's she's so sarcastic I think that's one of the reasons it is is like she kind of reminds me of myself because she's so sarcastic in certain things she says and I'm so sarcastic too and it's like we mesh together I also like this book because it is set in present times. The references they make in this book, like, you understand them because, I mean, this book was published, like, a few years ago, so, I mean, some of them are old, but, like, the references they make in this book, like, you get them. Like, she was seriously thinking as a teenager while she was writing this, and I really like that because, like, I understood all the references they made towards it because, like, it's my generation. Like, I grew up with 
these events and stuff they're talking about, these celebrities. And so, like, I know these and I remember the events they're talking about. And it's just, I just love it. Like, I felt like it can connect more on a personal level with this book. Because, like, it's stuff I've actually witnessed and stuff. And to tell you, these are some of my, like, favorite lines that Madison comes up with. Because, like, everything out of her mouth, it's like that. And it's just so freaking hilarious. And don't let your mouth write checks that your ass can't cash. And this is, not, this is like one of my favorites because there's another reference and I totally remember everybody talking about this when this happened. And they're sitting in her car. Since it's so southern down in Savannah, Georgia and everything. And like it's so country. And of course, you gotta be listening to some Taylor Swift because honestly, you're not living your teenage years right if you're not listening to Miss Taylor Swift. And the good stuff, the old stuff, not this new stuff she has. Like the good old stuff when she had her long curly hair. Oh, she was so gorgeous. I don't mean to get all Kanye, but you need to hear me. Like, oh my gosh, the fact that when that happened, it was so funny and everybody was always talking about how oh, Kanye, oh Kanye, you stupid little short man. We call her CT, but I think we're two letters short. <laughs> I hope everybody understands the bad word they are trying to put in there because I totally got that because I'm a perverted mind and my friends are sailors, cuss like sailors. And I hear that word like every day at school, so I understand it and I thought it was fun. One of my favorite characters, he is definitely a favorite book crush after rereading this. Like he is totally my guy. He's so attractive and I had a crush on him the first time I read this. And I completely forgot how hot he was until after I reread the description of him when I was rereading this and he is so attractive. Like you, you don't understand. Like I'm gonna read it for you and like oh my gosh. I haven't seen that many movies but this guy definitely looks like he's straight out of Hollywood. Tall, blonde hair that slips down his forehead, white shirt tucked into khaki pants, Converse tennis shoes, tortoise shell glasses, spamming a pair of very green eyes. <gasps> it's so attractive. So attractive. Like, I don't know about you guys, like, you don't know, but I've got an obsession with Converse. Like, I own over 10 pairs in different colors. And they're just, they're amazing. I love Converse. They're like my favorite pair of shoes. And the fact that he's wearing Converse tennis shoes just makes him a hundred times hotter. And the fact that he wears hipster glasses too makes him a hundred times hotter. And he needs to be real so he can stand here and I can just I just need him. You don't need to know what I'm gonna do to him. I just need him. And he's attractive. And did I mention his name was Thaddeus? And like the, every time I think of his name, like I watched American Horror Story. Oh my god, it's so amazing. You gotta watch it if you haven't watched it. But I watched it and in the first season, the baby's name is Thaddeus and like that thing that comes on the screen is terrifying. And I had to sleep with the lights on one night because I thought it was going to come out and eat me. That's why you don't watch American Horror Story at night. I learned my lesson the hard way. Anyways, so that image kept like flashing in my mind when I saw the name Thaddeus. I'm like, no, that's not who it is. It's this really hot guy that I want to date. That's who Thaddeus is. He's, he's so attractive. He's so attractive. I just I just want him and he's, he's cute. And I, f I feel so bad for him at the end. Like the end of this book. I am just like, no, no, baby, come back. Come to me. I'll, I'll take you. I'll take you. We'll make everything good. Everything's going to be great. Don't worry. Everything's going to be absolutely perfect. Now, the main character's name is Alex. And I find Alex so relatable. Because this is all told from her point of view. And it's just things like a normal teen put into the situation would think of. Because she, again, grew up on a commune farm. And... Again, like everything shared, there's no really no real school. There's no television. There's just books, and there's like one computer and like a payphone, and like nobody ever uses them. And then to go from that to living in a really rich mansion in Savannah, Georgia, where she has a phone which she's never had before. She's got a laptop. She's got a credit card she can buy. She's got TV, and she's got all this stuff she can do. And the fact that like she's really never had any experience with boys. Besides her boyfriend Reggie, who is a douchebag and nobody likes him, she just needs to fall off the face of the earth. If he makes an appearance in the second book, I may shoot him. But I'm like 100 pages away from finishing, so I don't think he's going to show up. But if he did, I'd just like complicate everything more. Anyways, but she's never had experience with a guy, and so when she first kisses Thaddeus or whatever, and they're making out 
on the sofa she's just thinking she's so adorable and it's like she reminds me of myself because she's kind of awkward when it comes to guys and it's cute because Thaddeus is awkward too and it's just like I need an awkward guy like that for myself I really like her in the way that she really doesn't want to change like they're trying to convince her with all this hoodoo to change her looks and everything and she really doesn't want to but eventually you know she does give in like she shaves her dress and they use that weird itchy stuff to um, grow her hair out long and luscious. And she's actually very pretty if this is her on the cover. She's like gorgeous. And they use a little bird charm thingy to take the bird, eat her food, so like she stays itty bitty stick thin. And she really doesn't want to do that, but you know, eventually she gives in because you peer pressure and you're around it all the time. She wants to look like Hazen Madison because hello, they're drop dead gorgeous and they're like a size triple zero. I know she's surrounded by peer pressure, but I felt kind of sad when she started giving in to everything and she was becoming tinier and she was cutting her hair and everything and I didn't like that but I lo I liked her more too when she breaks into her mother's room and Cena's there and Cena has this little chat and it's like a back to reality type thing for Alex. Cena's telling her she's like I thought you were different. I thought you were going to be a lot different than these little magnolias that we have and that you were actually gonna change and make everything better and you didn't you just turned out to be just like one of them and you're no better than the rest and nothing's ever gonna change and it's just gonna be a repeating cycle of everything and that kind of brings Alex back to reality like hey I never wanted to be like this I never I never wanted anything like this to happen she just she just got so caught up in everything and that kind of brings her back to the point where she's like, okay, now it's time to get back to business. And that's when she makes the deal with Cena. And I like that she's sticking back to her roots. And she's like, okay, so I can't obviously change my appearance right now because somebody would know what I was up. But I got to play the part. I don't want to look like this anymore. I miss my old self. But I'm going to play the part till we can figure this all out and free my mother. So I really like that she got back in touch with the real her and she's like, I don't look like this. I don't even look like myself anymore. Like, who would even recognize me? Like, I don't even recognize myself in the mirror. How the hell is everybody else going to recognize me? So the description of Sam's house. I would love to live in a little one-room house like that. Like, I think that is so cute. And all those bookshelves he has on his walls are absolutely amazing. And I want them. Like... I'm going to have my own personal library in my house when I get older. Like, it's it's not a choice. It's going to happen. This book, like, I feel it's, it's very good. I really do like it. And I like how normally what happens in books like these is the main character, you know, she wants to stick to her roots and she doesn't want to change herself. She's comfortably comfortable being her. And then, you know, she gets swept in with the popular girls and they change her. And that's how it ends, and she's beautiful, and she's pretty, and she gets the guy, and everything that happens. This book does not end like that, and that's what I like about it, because it doesn't end with her being absolutely dropped and gorgeous, and she's dating Thaddeus, and it's going to be happily ever after, and it's just going to continue this awful, horrible pattern that the Magnolias do. I like how she does have that heart-to-heart -heart with Cena, basically, in her mother's room, but she's telling her, hey, you need to get your act together, and she realizes this isn't who I wanted to be. Like, it's nothing close to the person I used to be or what the person I want to be is. And the fact that she comes back to Earth and she's like, okay, now I gotta fix everything so I can go back to being me. I really like that, how she just changes back to herself and she's ready for this. I feel like I'm rambling and my camera's about to die, but that is going to be it for this book talk. Oh, this book is so good. I'm excited to finish the second one. So, hope you enjoyed this. I'll see you guys next time with a tag video, top by Wednesday, or a book talk. Until then, I'm Chrissy, and I'll see you next time.